got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. Oh, hello. I didn't realize my artist had arrived. Welcome. My name is Narissa Long Milton, but you can call me Miss Riss. I heard that you wanted to know how I got started writing poetry and short stories. Do you want to know the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? All right, I'm ready to tell it. You see, when I was a little girl, I had a bookshelf that went from the ceiling all the way to the floor. It was about this wide and it was filled with books. I read every one of those books. Anything I could get my hands on, I would read. My dad, he would share literature and introduce us to some of the great authors. We would all gather around mommy and daddy's office and listen to poems or take part in reading Shakespeare or the Bible. Or we might ask daddy to read us some of his poems or short stories. He was a writer, a speaker, a principal, and a preacher. He was everything. And storytelling with my dad was so believable. He said he got his storytelling from his dad. But his dad was not even allowed to learn to read or write because of slavery. Can you imagine? That slavery system was not good. Oh, and I loved my fairy tales, especially those by Hans Christian Andersen and Grimm's. You know, tales like Cinderella, Frozen, and The Little Mermaid. Yes, we had those books back then. I thought everyone had books like this. But one day, I asked my dad an important question about my books. Dad, I said, I love my fairy tales, but of all these books, why aren't there any poems or stories about Negro children and little brown girls like me? None of the poems and stories I read say nice things about girls like me. It makes me feel ashamed of myself. And I always mark the bad words out. Then I get mad, I mean angry all over. Why is it dad, don't people like us? That's when dad said, calm down my little girl. I'll admit that there are some words that people use to describe us that I don't like either. But please don't get too upset but instead you should try to do something about it. But Papa, I said, trying to bring him back to my original question. Why aren't there some really nice books about us? Then he said, that my little question box is a very important question. I wonder if I can make you see how important it is. That's when daddy went into storytelling mode. In the first place, most of the tales and myths you read about were written in other countries like Europe, Africa, and Asia. Naturally, those authors would tell about children, fairies, and legends from their own countries. These were handed down by storytellers through the years until someone was smart enough to write them in a book. Then, when the printing press came along, books were printed and sent all over the world. That is how some of them found their way into our library and onto that big shelf. But we, in America, have very few tales of our own. You see, our country is young compared with other countries. The early American settlers were so busy getting settled in America that they didn't have time to go around collecting myths and writing tales. And if they had, they probably would have written stories about the countries they came from. And so, my dear, you would still be looking for poems and tales about Negro children and little brown girls. <laughs> then, got, <laughs> then Daddy got to the moral. He always had to have a moral of the story. 
The opportunity remains for someone else to observe our children and record our own poems and stories. Then you would have them to read along with all the other fine books about young children. And other children here and in other countries could read about you and know the truth about you. <laughs> then he asked me a question. Why doesn't my little girl to plan to be the one to tell the stories and write the poems? Think about it. There has to be a beginning, he said. <laughs> right then and there, this little bookworm decided that the author in me was the author for the job. I spent hours and hours writing the poems and bringing them to mom and dad for approval, one by one. Everything I saw, I wrote about. This really great literature was kept locked in the bottom of our very tiny treasure chest. But guess what? Somehow that chest got lost or stolen. That hurt. But daddy said they weren't really lost or stolen, but they were tucked away and sleeping in my heart. Sometimes they would wake up for a short while and I'd start writing them down again. But when daddy died and then mama died, I knew it was time to wake up all the poems for good. Daddy would be so proud. And so my artist friends, that's the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. I hope this little book of poetry finds its way into your hearts. Most of the children written about are real people and I know them personally. You will find that all children, red, yellow, black, brown, or white, are all similar and all are important. Most of all, thank you for creating illustrations for this poetry book. Did you know it was always a dream of mine to have a picture for each poem? Dad said you should always do things to make poetry come alive, like draw it, memorize it, talk about it, sing it, even dance it. Did you know my sister Audrey was an artist and that she drew a couple of pictures for the book too? See? This is so magnificent. I love how this story started over 150 years ago and now you are adding your strokes and imagination to it. See, my dad's dad's story is connected to my dad's story and my dad's story is connected to my story. And I didn't have children, so my story is connected to your story. And your story is connected to your children's children's story. Magnificent! I cannot wait to see your masterpieces. Now, do you have a dream? Is there something you want to do? Or is there something that makes you angry? Do you have a question that needs to be answered? As a very wise parent said long ago, my daddy, that's an important question. Why don't you plan to do it? There has to be a beginning. Or perhaps some of you will also continue drawing, writing poetry and stories and give the world a great big production that could change the world. Then the people would know the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth about you. And continue the dreams born long ago in the heart of this little brown girl. Daddy would be so proud. <laughs> He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got you and me, sister. In his hands, he's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. All right, bye-bye. I cannot wait to see your masterpieces. Thank you.